Hey guys, Richard Scouting, Remount Horsemanship. As a lot of you guys know, I'm getting ready to go to the Western Dressage Worlds Competition in Oklahoma. We'll be pulling out of here in a few days. But I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some of the most asked questions that I've been getting asked as I've been preparing for this. And the most asked question, the number one question is, are you ready? Well, yeah, I'm ready. I'm as ready as I'll ever be, especially when, once I get there because I won't have a choice. But I have been practicing quite a bit. I've been practicing the tests. I've been practicing the maneuvers. I've been getting chiropractic work done on my horse. I've been making sure that he's in top shape for the travel out there so that he's ready for the show. Honestly, I wanted to put more time into my training. I had to, some setbacks, you know, life happens. I had a surgery that took me out of riding for a couple of weeks. But generally, I'm pretty, feeling pretty good about going out to the show. I'm kind of one of those guys that likes to kind of expect the best, prepare for the worst. So I've been practicing quite a bit and I feel like Duke and I, we're ready to go out there and give it our best. When I go out there, I might ride in that arena, I might salute that judge and then it all might go to hell in a handbasket. That can happen. And you know what, I'm okay with that because I know that when Duke and I ride into that arena, we are gonna give it 100% for that day, for those five to six minutes that we're riding, we're gonna give it 100%. And I'm gonna give it my best, and I know Duke's gonna give it his best. So if uh, any punches come our way, we're just gonna have to roll with them and keep on trucking. But yes, I am ready, uh, I am nervous. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. But, you know, it's like what John Wayne says, courage is being scared to death saddling up and riding anyway. So we're gonna saddle up and ride anyways. The next most asked question is what have I been doing to get ready to, to train for this? Um, in dressage, there's a bunch of levels and there's a bunch of tests within those levels. So like right here, I'm looking in front of me and I got a, uh, got a level three test three test and there's 19 moves that I need to do in this test. So what I do is I take each maneuver and that's what I practice. So like, you know, right here it says, turn down the center line, shoulder in left. So I'll work on riding a straight line and working on shoulders in to the left and to the right. And then I'll go down to the next one and it'll say, okay, half pass right, and then go straight ahead. And when I say go straight ahead in dressage, there's letters in the arena and those letters are reference points for when you execute a maneuver. So this one here says, M to L, half pass right. So from M to L, I'm gonna half pass right. <clears throat> and then when I get to L, I'll ride straight ahead. So I take all of the maneuvers in the test and I break them down and I work on each individual maneuver. And then once each individual maneuver is good, good enough, then I'll put it all together and I'll ride the whole test. And I always look back, right? Observe, remember, and compare. So if I rode the whole, whole test and say, for instance, my half pass to the right wasn't very good. Well, I might not work on the other ingredients that are really good, but I might spend a little time focusing on that half pass to the right. And then once that gets going good again, then I'll put everything back together and ride the entire test. One thing I don't like to do is I don't like to drill the entire test over and over and over. Because what I have found is that horses are very, very smart. <laughs> and you can actually teach your horses to make an assumption. So for instance, um, you know, say you're counter cantering and it calls for a counter canter and then a flying lead change. You can teach your horse pretty quick to do a flying lead change at that letter after he's done these other maneuvers, they know exactly when that lead change, change is coming and they will do that flying lead change. And that's, in that instance, that's that's that horse making an assumption. I don't like to make, I don't like to train assumptions. I like to have my horses wait for me. So if I have a horse that's making an assumption and say I'm at that counter canter and he's automatically giving me that flying lead change, well then when I am riding my tests and I'm working on these maneuvers, when I get to that flying lead change, well I might keep counter cantering. I might counter canter and not ask for a flying lead change. I might do a simple lead change or I might uh, do a flying lead change after I've ridden all the way across the arena because I want my horse being ready and thinking with me and be right at my fingertips when I ask him to give me something. I don't want him to be a robot and to be going down there and saying, okay, well, here we are. We're, I just did a circle to the left. Now we're counter cantering. 
I'm going to give you a lead change. Lead change. That's how a horse can build their anxiety and it can uh, kind of mess up your test and your pattern. So I work on every maneuver individually and then I put it together and then I break it back down and I work on the maneuvers individually, whichever ones they are. And all of the dressage tests, you know, this is the dressage test. I print them out, fold them up, put them in my pocket, and I just study these things until I know them really, really well. And another thing that I do for, for my horse is I don't always work on dressage. I don't always work on the patterns. I don't even always work on the maneuvers. Sometimes I'll go out and I'll just trail ride. Some days I'll go out and I'll work cattle. Sometimes I'll go out and I'll go rope. Um, kind of cross train. I don't want him to be like, oh geez, there's a dressage ring again, man. Now I gotta be all collected and fancy and stuff. You know, I want him to have days off and I want him to have days where we go out and see different sites and do different things. So it's kind of an 80-20 rule, 80% 80 consistency and then 20% variety. So I don't always do it. I just kind of give him some days that go out there and, and we just kind of play around and do things that, are, that aren't dressage-y. And then the third question that I get asked quite a bit is, well, Richard, are you gonna win? Heck y'all, I don't have any idea if I'm gonna win. If I do, that's gonna be phenomenal. I'm gonna love it. But I'm gonna tell you this much. I'm very new to the showing world. I don't have much showing under my belt. I'm going into a lot of uncharted water. I'm very confident going into it, but it's just, it's, you know, I've never done it. I don't have much experience doing it. I think this year I've showed maybe you know, on the top side 10 times this year, and then I'm going to the Worlds. There's lots of good riders there. Um, I don't know, I don't have any idea, but like I said at the first question, I'm gonna go in there and give it my best, give it my 100%. My horse is gonna give it 100%. And wherever we land is where we land, and you know what, I'm gonna be happy with it. I'm gonna chalk it up to education, chalk it up as a learning experience, and then I'll just kind of take what I learned from the show, and if I go back to more showing or to Worlds next year, then I'll just take the, the lessons that I learned from this one and apply them to the to the next show. So, so am I gonna win? I don't know, it would be really cool if I did, but who knows, a lot of stuff can happen. I can tell you that right now. So those are some of the questions that I get asked and I just thought I'd take a few minutes and share my answers with y'all. All right, thanks for watching guys, take care.